and you wanted to have and devise a way for your children to come to know you by choosing to be in relationship with you, rather than being overwhelmed by your unimaginable glory and goodness, this may be the perfect way to choose for people to enter into relationship. Moreover, how about the notion that what God has given to us is actually an instrument for knowing him? The perfect metaphor, I think, for this is the liahona. That is something that is an instrument of spiritual guidance and knowing that is planted in our very hearts. You see, what I'm suggesting is that we have implanted within us our own personal liahona within our hearts. It works when we're spiritually sensitive and it guides us. And when we're not spiritually sensitive, it simply doesn't work at all. All it is is not there. <laughs> so what do we know based on this experience? Now I'm going to suggest something. And this may be surprising to you, but merely by having this experience doesn't mean that we know. Can this experience be doubted? Can it be doubted that it came from God? And the answer is, of course it can. There are scores of Latter-day Saints who have had this experience who no longer have a testimony. So, if it can be doubted, because it can be doubted because it is in fact at times doubted. Now, it is often asserted that we cannot know anything with surety. In fact, I hear that from people who've lost their testimony. However, we can know that we've had this experience. Nevertheless, the issue as to the veridicality of the source of the experience, whether it is caused by God or by our own brain processes, requires faith. And the primary source for looking at that is Alma 32. Alma 32, 28 says, if you give place that a seed may be planted in your heart, he suggests that it will begin to swell in your breasts. And then we will feel swelling motions, and you'll know it's good. And here's how you know that it's good. It begins to enlarge my soul. It begins to enlighten my understanding. And it begins to be delicious to me. Repeating three times, the word begins. Alma 32 and 34 then has a question that is asked. Is this knowledge? And surprisingly, the answer that's given is no. It hasn't grown into knowledge, but you must say that it's a good seed because it grows. Now, are you sure it's a good seed? And Alma gives the answer, yeah, it's a good seed. And how do you know that? Is your knowledge perfect in that thing? And Alma says, yes, it's perfect in that thing. What you know is that the word has swelled in your soul, that it has sprouted, that your understanding begins enlightened, and your mind begins to expand. Do you know anything more than that? Well, only by faith. Alma then asks this question, is it real? Yes, because it's light and light is good and good is discernible. Now Alma again asks the question in, in verse 36. Now after you have tasted the light, is your knowledge perfect? And surprisingly the answer once again is nay. It still requires faith. We must still nourish the tree or it will not grow. If we neglect the tree, it won't grow. Not because the seed wasn't good, but because, quote, your ground was barren. You see, whether or not we have spiritual experience depends on whether we are open and soft-hearted as opposed to being hardened in the heart. Now, how do we plant the seed? Alma explains that too. We search the scriptures. In fact, he goes on to tell, he quotes Zenos and Zenoch and Moses, who tell the story of the brazen serpent. And as you've heard earlier today, the brazen serpent that was raised is actually Christ. All they had to do was look, but because of the hardness of their hearts, they wouldn't look. They refused the invitation to come and see for themselves simply by closing their hearts. So I would ask, what do we know after we have such a spiritual experience? Do we know that God is the source of the experience? Well, here's what we know. We know that we can't produce the experience at will. We know in many cases that the experience came while earnestly and sincerely seeking a response from God. We know that we experienced it as coming from God in the experiencing of it. We know that as a result of the experience, we feel immense love and desire to do better. In this sense, we know that the experience is good and good is discernible. We also know that all of our experience and the meaning of life is reoriented. We are born again, a new person seeing with new eyes and a new heart. Now, I ask again, can humans really know anything? Does the experience come from God, or do we merely interpret it to be experienced as coming from God? I'm going to deal with the strongest arguments that I know. The first argument is, 
is the argument from the interpretive framework inherent in all human experience. And these are the premises. The first premise, all human experience involves interpretation. And I guarantee you that it does. That's true. Two, the interpretation of the experience of the burning in the bosom as coming from God is something we do as humans. And three, the interpretation is therefore a human contribution to the experience, and all that we really know is that we have had an experience, that we experience it as coming from God in the experiencing of it, and we cannot know more than that. Well, is that a good argument? It is in a sense, but the argument proves too much. If all we really experience, and maybe at this point it makes some sense to talk about and show the kind of interpretation to human experience we have, maybe we ought to see the dots. Because the fact is, is that our, our, I want you to stare at the black cross in the middle and watch what happens. Has it disappeared yet? If you still see the, the purple dots on the outside, raise your hand. <laughs> Have they disappeared for anybody? Keep looking. Has the, has the ball turned red for anybody? Green. Should turn green, actually, yeah. Well, for a person who's colorblind like me, it's red. All right. <laughs> Our minds add the experience of seeing a green ball, and they take away the dots because they become irrelevant to our experience. You see, there's really more there than we're experiencing. We filter out of our experience literally 90 to 98 percent of all of the sense data that come into us. We don't even bring it to consciousness. And so is it a reality? This is what I'm showing you, is that our experience is in fact interpretive, at least when it comes through our senses. So is it the case that all we're really doing when we have a spiritual experience is interpreting it as coming from God, and it's simply up for grabs as to whether interpretation is true or not? I suggest that there would be no possibility of new experiences that break out of the framework of existing paradigms, worldviews, or our prior interpretations if all experience were necessarily limited to our pre-interpretive framework of interpretation. Yet that is precisely what a conversionist experience is. It reorients one's entire view of the world and changes and alters the interpretive framework. Thus, it must be in some sense logically and experientially prior to the interpretive experience. You can turn that off now. People are much more interested in that than they am in me. <laughs> oh, maybe we ought to see rabbit duck. Just because anybody who studied Ludwig Wittgenstein has to see this. <laughs> you probably have already, actually. In a large way, the way that we see the world is up to us. What do you see? Do you see a duck? How many see a duck? How many see a rabbit? Okay. Who's right? <laughs> In fact, you can change, if you will, once you've learned how to see it, you can change at will the way you're going to see this figure. And in a large way, the way that we can choose to see our experience is precisely like this. We can choose to organize our experience to see it in different ways. I suggest that in the experiencing of religious experience, this is often what is happening. We're choosing to see different things and experience different things because of our pre-interpretive framework. But I'm suggesting that that's not all there is to experience. There's more to experience than mere interpretation. And this argument isn't any good unless all of our experience is simply interpretation. As I said, the, the spiritual experience must in some sense be logically and experientially prior to our interpretive experience because it reorients our experience. It gives us a new way of seeing. Moreover, if the experience rearranges and replaces the framework, so it is the framework or categories, then it is not interpreted experience, but interpretive, and the basis for all further experience as such. Now this argument also assumes that the entirety of what is experienced is interpretive, but there's more than interpretation that gives content to our experience, and the experience of the burning in the heart and the, and the inspiration is coming from God is in fact good reason to believe that it does in fact come from God, because that's how we experience it. If all we ever did were to regurgitate our prior categories of thought or fixed framework of beliefs and there could never be any novel or creatively new things, no new scientific theories could emerge, new inventions would be impossible, and new revelations could never happen because all we would do is regurgitate what we already know. 
But that's not the way human life is, so I suggest that the argument isn't valid. Now, one of the characterizing aspects of the experience, as I said, is that it reorients our lives.